Over the past couple of weeks, a few pro members reached out asking if I could cover a specific scroll animation from a site that won award site of the day back in April. If you have been following this channel, you might remember we recently rebuilt this text animation from the same website, but there were a bunch of other cool interactions I didn't get to explore at the time. One of the standout ideas was the scroll driven hero animation where the icons start out at the bottom of the section, then rise up and shrink as you scroll and just as they reach the center, they scatter smoothly into place, nesting themselves between the text content to complete the headline. We haven't covered anything quite like this on the channel before, so when the request came in, I figured it would be a fun challenge to rebuild. It took me around 10 hours to put it together, just using JavaScript, GSAP and scroll trigger. And I won't lie, this one turned out to be trickier than I expected. But after a bunch of trial and error, I was able to recreate the core concept pretty closely. The cool part is, it's fully customizable, the icons are just image elements so you can easily replace them and place them anywhere inside your text. The script dynamically calculates their movement, so you don't need to hard code any positions. Also, it's fully responsive. As you can see, the layout and motion still hold up nicely on smaller screens. If you enjoy seeing such award-winning web animations broken down and rebuilt from scratch, give the video a like and consider subscribing. And if you want to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a complete new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into it. Before we dive into the code, let me quickly show you where I got the icons from. I found them on Figma community resources. If you search for symbols, you'll come across this free clonable file that includes all the icons I used here. All I did was grab a few, add a simple background behind each one and export them as images. That's it. But of course, you can use any images you want. This setup is totally flexible. Alright, let's start with the HTML. For this project, I am creating two sections, a hero section and a simple outro. The hero is where all the scroll animations happen and the outro just acts as a scroll endpoint with a call to action. Inside the hero, I have added a header block with the project name and a short tagline. This block is going to fade out as we start scrolling. Next, I have added a set of animated icons, 5 in total, all lined up at the bottom. These are image elements that will animate as user scrolls down. They'll move upward, scale and eventually travel into the text above. Right after that comes the animated headline. Now this part is important. Inside the headline, I have alternated between placeholder elements and short pieces of text. The placeholders are invisible blocks that mark where each icon will land. The text pieces are wrapped in spans and will reveal them later one by one once the icons snap into position. Finally, the outer section is super minimal, it just has some dummy text. This gives the scroll trigger a natural endpoint after the main animation finishes. So that's the full HTML layout. Next, let's move into the styling. First, you can see I've imported the host Grotex font from Google Fonts. It gives the layout a clean, contemporary look that fits well with the rest of the visual language. Next, I'll reset the default styles by removing margin and padding and setting box sizing to border box. This keeps everything consistent across browsers and avoids layout bugs down the line. For the body, I'll apply the font we just imported. Now, I'll style the headings, scaling them up using a fluid font size that adjusts to the viewport, setting a bold weight and tightening the line height for a sharper look. Paragraphs are styled with a more modest size for better readability. Each section will take up the full viewport height. I'll center everything using Flexbox, give it some padding and set a background with a soft off-white text color for contrast. Overflow is hidden to make sure animations stay within bounds. For the hero section, I'll switch to a column layout and add a background color transition so you can animate it during scroll. Then I'll style the header block, positioning it dead center using translate, giving it a fixed width, some vertical spacing and center aligning the text. I'll also set will change on transform and opacity to make sure the animation runs smoothly when we fade and move this element on scroll. Next, I'll style the animated icons container. I am fixing it to the bottom of the screen, stretching it edge to edge with a small gap between icons. It's using flex layout to keep them evenly spaced. And I'll apply will change to the transform here too, since we'll be animating position and scale as the scroll progresses. Each individual icon is set up to maintain a square shape using aspect ratio. These are just image elements, so we can easily swap them out later without touching the layout. 
Now for the animated headline, I'll center it and set a responsive font size using clamp. The color flips to dark since the background will lighten up midway through the scroll. Font weight stays bold and line height is tight for impact. The text segments inside the headline all start with zero opacity, we'll animate them later one by one after the icons finish moving into place. Between those segments, I've added placeholder elements for the icons. These are invisible but hold space in the layout. I am giving them fixed dimensions, positioning them in line with the text and setting will change on transform since the icons will snap to these spots dynamically. Visibility is set to hidden so they don't actually show up but their layout still gets respected. Lastly, I'll drop in a media query for screens below 1000 pixels wide. In mobile view, I'll bump up the heading font size slightly using viewport units, center align the text and adjust the placeholder icons so they scale down proportionally. I'll also move the header up a bit to keep things balanced visually on smaller screens. And that's the full styling. Next, we'll jump into JavaScript and start setting up the scroll behavior. Before we do anything custom, I'll first bring in the tools we need. I'm using GCEP for all the animations and scroll trigger to connect them to scroll progress. I'm also using Lennis to add smooth scrolling across the page. Right after that, I'll register the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. This step is required anytime you want to use a GSAP plugin. You just register it once at the start. Now to get started, I'll just paste a standard block of code directly from the Lennis documentation. I'm not changing anything here. It's the exact setup they recommend. This initializes Lennis, connects it to scroll trigger and ties everything into GSAP's update loop. What that does is basically replace the browser's default scrolling with a smoother version that feels more fluid and natural. And since scroll trigger depends on scroll progress, we need to sync Lennis and scroll trigger so they work together properly. Once that's in place, I'll move on and grab the elements we'll need for the animation. I'm selecting the icon container, each individual icon, all the text segments inside the headline and the invisible placeholders where the icons will land. I'm also selecting the hero header and the entire hero section since we'll be fading and transforming both of those as part of the scroll animation. That's the initial setup, just getting everything connected and ready to animate. Next, we'll look at how to randomize the text segment reveal order and prep for scroll triggered movement. First, I'll create an empty array to hold the order in which our text segments will appear. These are the lines inside the headline that fade in one by one near the end of the scroll. I loop through each text segment and store it along with its original index. This way, even if we shuffle the order, we'll always know where it came from. Then, I'll shuffle that array using a basic randomization loop. This part is important because I don't want the text segments to always reveal in same order. Randomizing them makes the animation feel more alive, just same as the original site. Next, I'll check if the screen is mobile or desktop. I'm using a simple condition to see if the window width is less than or equal to 1000 pixels. If it is, I'll treat it as a mobile device. Based on that, I'll define the final size of the icons when they land in the headline. For mobile, I want the icons to shrink down to 30 pixels. For larger screens, I'll use 60 pixels. These are the target sizes for when the icons finish moving and lock into place inside the text. Then I'll get the actual current size of the icons on the screen. This comes from the first icons bonding box. Now I calculate the exact scale we'll need to apply later. Instead of hard coding a random scale value, I'll just divide the final target size by the current size. This gives me a clean, pixel accurate scaling ratio that works on any screen. Alright, now we are ready to set up the scroll trigger. I'll create one scroll trigger tied to the hero section. It starts at the top of the page and stretches across 8 full screen heights. That gives us plenty of scroll space to choreograph all the phases of animation. The hero section is pinned in place for the entire duration of the scroll trigger. That means it will stay frozen on screen while everything inside it animates. I've also enabled pin spacing so we don't get layout jump and set scrub to 1 which links the animation progress directly to how fast or slow we scroll. That's the full prep block, text order, scale logic and scroll trigger are now all in place. Next, we'll start animating the icons and the hero header based on scroll progress. We are inside the onUpdate callback function and this runs in real time every time the page scrolls. First, I'll grab the current scroll progress from scroll trigger. This gives us a value from 0 to 1 where 0 is the top of the page and 1 is the end of the scroll range we defined. The first thing I'll do is hide all the text segments. We are doing this upfront to make sure nothing appears too early. 
We'll reveal them later, only when the scroll reaches the right phase. Next, I am checking if the scroll progress is less than or equal to 30%. This marks the beginning of the animation, where the icons start rising up and the hero header fades out. To make things easier to work with, I'll create a new variable called move progress. It basically converts the scroll progress from 0 to 1, but only for this first 30% of the scroll. Now I want the entire container to move upward as you scroll, so I'll multiply the height of the viewport by 30% to define how far it should move. Then I'll apply the move progress value to scale that movement as you scroll down. Next, I'll animate the hero header. If we are still within the first 15% of the scroll, the header will slide up and start fading out. I'll calculate how far it should move and reduce the opacity at the same time. The result is that the header lifts upward about 50 pixels and fades out completely. Once we cross 15% scroll, I'll lock the header in that position and keep it hidden. That way, it doesn't interfere with the animations that follow. We are also doing some cleanup here. If there are any duplicate icons left from a previous scroll, I'll remove them from the page. That keeps things clean and avoids any overlapping visuals. Now I'll update the styles for the icons container. We are moving it upward using a Y translation and keeping the scale at 1. We also keep the opacity at full for now. Each icon also needs its own movement timing, so I'll loop through every icon and give each one slight delay based on its index. This creates a staggered animation where they lift off one after another. For that, I define a start and end window for each icon. Then I remap the scroll progress into a smooth 0 to 1 range for that icon's timing. I clamp the result so it never goes below 0 or above 1. And finally, I use that clamped value to calculate how far each icon should move upward individually. This gives us a nice layered motion where each icon feels like it's rising on its own rhythm. And that completes the first phase of the scroll animation. The header fades out, the icons begin to lift off the bottom and everything responds smoothly to scroll. In the next part, we'll animate the icons as they scale up and move toward the center of the screen. This will be the second phase of the scroll between 30% and 60%. This is the part where the icon container moves from the bottom and starts scaling up toward the center of the screen. First, I create a variable called scale progress. This remaps the scroll progress between 30% and 60% into a clean 0 to 1 range. Doing this makes it easier to drive animation smoothly within that slice of the scroll timeline. We are no longer animating the hero header at this point, so I keep its opacity set to 0 and leave it shifted upward by 50 pixels, just like it was at the end of the phase 1. Now I want to transition the background color of the hero section. To do that, I check if scroll progress has crossed the halfway point, which would be 50%. If it has, I switch the background color to a light one. If we are still before that halfway mark, I keep it dark. This gradual transition gives us a clean visual shift as the icon scale and move into place. Before we start animating the icon container, I also clean up any duplicate icons from the last phase if they exist. This prevents leftover clones from showing up early or overlapping. Now for the main animation, I need the icon container to move from its current position to the center of the screen. To figure out how far it needs to move, I first calculate the exact center of the viewport, both horizontally and vertically, then I measure the center of the icon container in its current position. The difference between those two points gives me how far the container needs to shift on both the x and y axis. Next, I multiply that movement distance by scale progress. That way, as we scroll from 30% to 60%, the container gradually moves and scales into place at the center. I also apply scale transformation. The icons start at their original size, and by the time we hit 60% scroll, they have been scaled down to match the size of the placeholders inside the headline. I am using a variable called exact scale that we calculated earlier. It's based on the final icon size divided by the current size. So now, I am scaling the icon container from full size down to that exact target size using the scheme scale progress value. And I apply both position and scale updates on every frame using GSAP. I also make sure the container's opacity stays at full. I want it to remain visible during this entire transition. Then I reset the transform on each individual icon inside the container. I am setting both X and Y to 0 to make sure they stay in position relative to the container as it moves and scales. At this point, the container has loaded to the center and it has been scaled perfectly and it's ready to disappear in the next phase. Now we move into the third phase between 60% and 75% of scroll. This is where the magic starts to happen. The icon container fades out and each icon is animated individually to fly into its placeholder inside the headline. Just like before, I create another progress helper 
this time called move progress it converts the scroll slice between 60% and 75% into a 0 to 1 range the hero header remains hidden during this phase and the background color is now locked into the light one at the beginning of this phase, I set the icon's container position to the exact center of the screen. I apply the final scale value and immediately drop its opacity to zero. This clears the container out of the way and prepares us to animate individual icon clones. Now I check if we have already created clones of the original icons. I clone each icon manually. Each icon is an exact copy of its original, but I position it absolutely so I can move it freely across the page. I set the clone's width and height to match the final icon size, either 60 pixels on desktop or 30 pixels on mobile. I append each clone to the body and store them in an array so we can update their positions continuously as the user scrolls. Next, I calculate where each clone is starting and where it's supposed to land. To do that, I first find the center of the original icon using its bounding box. Then I find the center of the matching placeholder inside the headline. The difference between those two points gives us the total distance the icon needs to travel, both horizontally and vertically. Now I break the movement into two halves. For the first half of the phase, from 60% to around 67% scroll, I only animate their vertical position. This makes the icons float upward in a clean, coordinated motion. Once we pass the halfway point, from 67% to 75%, I animate the horizontal distance. So now, each icon starts drifting sideways into its exact final spot between the text. This gives us a really smooth, natural arc, rising first, then sliding in. Each frame, I calculate the current X and Y position of the clone based on move progress. Then I update the clone's top and left styles accordingly, so it appears to glide smoothly across the page. I also keep the opacity at full and make sure the clone is visible by setting its display to flex. By the end of this phase, at 75% scroll, every icon has reached its placeholder and the original icon is gone. Now we are ready for the final reveal where the headline text fades in line by line. We'll handle that next. This will be the final phase of the scroll, anything beyond 75%. At this point, the icon animations are complete so we keep the hero header hidden. I move it slightly further up and leave the opacity at zero so it stays completely out of view. The background color is already switched to a light one so I keep it locked there. Next, I make sure the original animated icon container stays hidden. We have already transitioned to the individual icon clones, so we don't want the original bar showing anymore. Now I handle the icon duplicates. Even though the animation is done, I still need to make sure each duplicate stays exactly positioned inside its placeholder. So I loop through each one and recalculate its position. I find the center of the matching placeholder using its bounding box. Then I convert those values into page coordinates by adding the current scroll offset. This gives me the exact top and left values I need to position the icon clone. I apply the styles directly, setting the left, top, opacity and display to make sure each one remains fully visible and perfectly aligned. Now it's time for the text to animate in. This is the headline we built earlier using separate text segments. Earlier in the script, we randomized the order in which these segments should appear. Now I loop through that randomized list. For each segment, I define a unique start and end point based on scroll progress. The first one begins right at 75% and each next segment is spaced slightly after it using a small offset. That way, the text fades in one line at a time in a natural staggered rhythm. I calculate how far along we are between that segment start and end window. Then I clamp that value between 0 and 1 to keep the animation clean. Finally, I set the opacity of each text segment using that clamped value. As we continue scrolling through this final phase, the entire headline gradually reveals itself in the order we defined. By the end of the scroll, the full message is visible, icons locked in place and text completely faded in. That wraps up the entire scroll animation. It's dynamic, responsive and fully driven by scroll progress. All built with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, GSAP and scroll trigger. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.